Welcome to another educational video for Midwest Flyways. This is going to be a two-part video, guys. So today we're just going to cover part one of essentially decoy spreads, kind of decoy myths, a few of the things that you guys probably want to know when you're going out to set a spread. So let's just start with some of the things that are talked about a lot, that a lot of people think about a lot, but maybe aren't quite as important as you might think they are. One of those things is definitely going to be leaving a huge, massive hole in the spread for birds to land into. Now, it totally depends, and everything I'm going to say in this video is not a end-all be-all, like it is not the only thing. Of course, every situation is different, and you're going to find that out as we go through some of these things today. Sometimes birds will land right on top of each other. So just because you know you think birds want a bunch of open space to land into, it really doesn't mean anything. I've set tons of spreads where you think you're setting like a stopper. You know, you think that that is going to cut birds off from from going any further past that point. And then birds come into the field and they hop right over your stopper line and they land on the outside edge of your decoys. You can set spreads where there's a huge open shooting lane or hole in the spread for birds to come and land into, and they might think you know, nothing of that, and they might go land inside all your other decoys. So let's just walk through some basic things to know as you're thinking about setting a spread. First off, are you hunting migrating birds or are you hunting local birds? And the reason that that matters is because migrating birds, they don't know how many birds are in the area. They don't know what the current conditions or situations are. They don't know what your ag looks like right now. They're coming into your area. So when you're hunting migrators, you might use more decoys. You might rely a lot more on calling. There's all these different pieces that are components to hunting migrating birds. When you're hunting local birds, they kind of know some of the stuff that's in the area. They've been feeding in these spots. So for instance, let's say you're hunting early season geese and you know you only have a few hundred geese in an area and you're hunting a field that maybe there was 10 or 15 birds in yesterday. Not a lot of birds, but you figure you want to give it a try. So I would go out there and I would set, you know, a dozen decoys. Replicate the situation that you had seen previously. You want to set what you know those birds might be used to. When you're on water, a lot of guys will set a J-hook. People get really finicky about decoy spreads on water, moving decoys around, whatever. To be honest, I don't find that there's a huge difference all the time in decoy spreads on water. You know, I don't know that it necessarily does a ton to change the birds. Now, putting a bigger spread out versus a smaller spread, again, situational. But most of the time, when you think birds are flaring because of your decoys, the number one thing you need to check is your hide, okay? Your hide is almost always the reason that birds don't want to finish. And there's some indicators, you know, that we can talk about more in part two that'll kind of give some of that stuff away, when to know this versus that. But for today, your hide is the first thing you should check. The second thing you want to think about is your calling. You know, if those birds aren't used to hearing a lot of calling and you guys are ripping the calls, you might want to think about putting the call down. You might, might want to think about changing up how much you're calling or if you're calling aggressively. Those are different indicators, different things that you can change up that I would look at before you would start looking at your decoy spread, especially if you're hunting ducks on water. Now that said, sometimes depending on your wind, putting out a little stopper area of decoys, um, you know, setting what some might say is like a J hook, you know, which is going to be like this kind of look, right? Or, or like this kind of look, right? And what the whole goal of a J hook is, is that birds are going to come in and then you're funneling them down into the lower part of this J, right? That's the whole goal of it. Some people like to set a U spread, right? So these are your birds coming in. This is your U spread. Obviously, it just depends on the situation, depends on the day. You can go out and throw out 36 decoys all over in the water and have really no formation to them and birds will come in and they'll just finish perfectly. You know, people think a lot about like luck, setting their lucky ducks, right? I wouldn't set your lucky ducks maybe exactly where you want birds to land, but I don't think that birds feel like they can't land next to a lucky duck either. So setting duck spreads just depends. But again, same situation, a migrator day and a migrator day is going to be more like 20 mile per hour, 25 mile per hour in Northwest winds for us here in Minnesota. And that is going to mean to us there's a potential for birds to migrate. Those days we might set a little bit bigger of a spread. We might put out more decoys in the water or in the field. Now, when you're hunting big ag fields, 
especially for ducks, you're gonna wanna add some motion to your decoy spread. But I don't think you need tons and tons of duck decoys out there because you can set honkers, set goose decoys out in a field for mallards. Mallards associate geese with safety and with food. So if they see geese in a field, that's an easy thing for them to feel comfortable going there. So set out goose decoys. You can set out a few full body mallards in front of you, whatever silhouette mallards too, um, but spinners and geese is a great way to set a spread for ducks. Another question people ask all the time is how to mix silhouettes and full body decoys. So it's very basic, there's not that much to it, right? But typically a lot of people like to put full body decoys in the area that you want birds to finish or right around it, right? You put the best, most real looking decoys in the area you want birds to finish. And then you use silhouette decoys spread out throughout the spread and that'll kind of tie the rest of those decoys together and gives you a lot more of a, a bigger spread look. So when you're using silhouette decoys, and let me say this too, I've had no problem finishing birds in silhouette decoys. So not saying that you can't finish birds in silhouette decoys because absolutely you can, but for those of you asking how to mix full bodies in silhouette decoys, pretty simple. Typically, a lot of guys put their full bodies in the finishing area and then just spread everything else out. Uh, a couple more things that I wanted to talk about with your decoy spread in fields. Obviously, your hide is way more important, I think, than probably your decoy spread. That brings up the point of where are you hiding in this field? So your layout blinds, people will put socks all around their layout blinds. People can put, you know, you can put decoys behind you. Um, you know, there's a lot of different methods to, to what you see out there, but a lot of it is just based off what you scout. In terms of field edge, a lot of the time I like to put my decoys 20, 30 yards out from the edge of the field, just because a lot of birds don't like to be that close to the edge. They want to be more in the center of the field because they don't know what's in the tall grass. So it's a safety thing. And, and so for that reason, if you're hunting a field edge, try to leave your decoys 20, 30 yards off the field edge. In terms of water, I love hunting a point if the wind is conducive for it. You know, whether it's a, a wind off my shoulder, wind straight behind my back, you know, blowing into my back, um, you know, off either side, that's great. And the, the reason that that's great is because that point gives you all those options. So a lot of the time you'll notice as you're hunting, your wind will switch. So you might go from a north to a northeast and even over to an east, you know, and, and really hunting a point, it just gives you opportunity for if that wind does shift, you can just shift a little bit with it. You can move your spread pretty easily to either side of that point. All obviously situational and just kind of depends, but it's kind of nice to have a point if you're hunting birds. The other side of that is, you know, they're gonna land into the wind, but then those birds are protected in that bay. And a lot of birds are gonna to wanna to sit down in calm water so they can feed. And so really what you're trying to do is with that point or that bay or whatever, a lot of birds wanna to try to land down in a calmer area where it's protected, so. All right guys, so again, this is part one of this video. We're gonna do a part two, so stay tuned for that. But this is just some basic thought and strategy in terms of setting a decoy spread. Thanks for watching, and if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button.